Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and one thing I've always prided myself on with this channel is keeping it real. I give you the good news and the bad. Unfortunately, this is a bad news video. As you can see, there are no fish in this tank. So this video is about what happened to these fish and why. A week ago, this tank had two cowfish, a royal grama, and a yellow-tailed damsel. And now they're all dead, and here's what happened. So a week ago was Macna. And I went to Macna, and it was so much fun. I'll do a whole other video on the Macna, and I've already started putting some of that kind of stuff out. But while I was gone at Macna, one of the cowfish in this tank died. Now I had somebody watching my tank. Now the person I had watching my tank didn't realize I had two cowfish. So when he came over, he looked at my tank, everybody was doing great, everything was fine, and he loved the cowfish, but he didn't realize that one was missing. Now, what happened to that cowfish is really anybody's guess. Now, I did see ick on these two cowfish a few weeks ago, and it was just a couple of spots. Now you're probably saying, Scott, you did a video a while ago where you told me how to get rid of ick, and then you've done other videos on quarantine, and you've done a video on living with ick, so what happened? The reality is, is there's ick in my 210 gallon tank. It's completely unavoidable. So. Five or six years ago, I completely got rid of ick. I took my tank fallow, which means I got rid of all of the fish. I left it fallow for six weeks, and then when I put all the fish in, I didn't have any ick anymore, which is amazing, which is what you want. The problem is, is it can get in your tank through many different ways, not just adding a sick fish in there. If there's one parasite in the water, that could be when you introduce a coral, a piece of cleanup crew, some sand, some rock, it doesn't matter if there's one parasite in that water, it can contaminate it. And of course, I move coral back and forth between the big tank and the 24 gallon all the time. So even though I never saw ick on the fish in this tank, it likely got in there. Now, I haven't seen ick on my tangs in a long time. Maybe a parasite here and there, but to be honest, I can't remember the last time I've seen ick on my fish. So the fish are fine. The fish are able to fight it off. But cowfish are an expert only fish. Now, when I ordered my cowfish, I got three cowfish. Now, I didn't order three, but you know, they sent me three. One thing you will learn is when you order fish from a collector, your order is more of a suggestion box. You put right down what you'd like and they send you what they want to. So I ended up with three cowfish. One cowfish came in looking really rough and died in QT. That sucked. The other two cowfish did fine and I put them in the 24 gallon tank. They did really well other than I saw a couple spots of ick on them. And I wasn't too worried. I figured, you know what? They'll build up their slime coat and everything will be fine. And everything looked fine the day I left for Macna. Everything was fine. The tank looked great. The fish were good. I'd done my water change. Everything was fine. By Friday, or sorry, by Saturday, when the tank sitter came and looked at my tank, the tank looked fine. I was just missing a cowfish. Now, a cowfish can be toxic. As they die in stress, they can release toxins into the water. I've had this happen before in my big tank, but I run carbon all the time, so probably the carbon took the toxins out. This tank does not have carbon on it. So when the cowfish died, nobody pulled him out, which means toxins were likely released. Also, he was decaying in this tank, bringing nitrates and other nasties up in the tank. It wasn't good. Now, I don't know what killed the cowfish. He could have died from natural causes. They're an expert only fish. Now, I talked to my tank sitter when he left on Sunday, the tank looked, or sorry, on Saturday, the tank looked great. The cowfish were fine. In fact, no ick, no nothing. Everything looked brilliant. By the time I got home Sunday night, the living cowfish was completely covered in ick.
So was the damsel and so was the royal grama. I couldn't catch the damsel and the royal grama at the time, so I left them in. And you know what? They're pretty tough fish. I wasn't totally worried about them. I put the cowfish in QT and he died a couple days later. The damsel, he disappeared. Yeah, sucks. The royal grama, I was able to catch, put him in QT, where he eventually died. So yeah, what happened? I'm gonna guess it is toxins and ick. Between the two, I lost my entire fish population. The good news is the coral looks really good. So now there's still some pretty big problems with this tank. It has ick in it and that ick needs to go away. So I'm gonna leave it fallow for a minimum of six weeks and really to make sure you're 100% sure it's gone, you need to go 72 days. Now, I'm not sure how much it's actually going to matter because I need to be able to take coral from my big tank and put it in here. I'm still gonna buy a fish at the, or coral at the fish store and I'm still gonna bring coral home from work. So eventually, it will end up with ick in it again, unless I set up a crazy quarantine process, which is worth thinking about, but it's easier said than done. Now, I got an algae bloom after everything that's happened, so I've thrown four snails in there. These look like Mexican turbo snails, but they're from Vietnam. So we'll see how those guys knew. They're a brand new species of snail for me to try out. So I'm gonna try them out, see how they do. And if I need to switch up my snail population, I will. I also added four peppermint shrimp to hopefully help take care of some of that Aptasia. I added four, we'll see if that's enough for this tank. If I need more, I'll buy more. And of course, going forward, this is my wife's tank. So she'll have to decide what kind of fish she wants to put in it. I would love to see the smallest baby tang in this tank, but it might be a hard sell. So this episode was really hard for me to make, but I had to do it. I think it's really important that I keep it real on my channel. I can't just show the good without showing the bad. And unfortunately, we're in the bad. I made some pretty iffy mistakes and I will hopefully learn from them. So thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.